Philip Seymour Hoffman, for it is he. He's back. Again. Excellent. In Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, which, of course, is you know an abbreviation of the phrase, may you be in heaven 15 minutes before the devil knows you're dead, or half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. So um, the story here is that Philip Seymour Hoffman is one half of two brothers, the other being played by Ethan Hawke. Um, and uh, they are both in various states of financial disarray and uh, disenchanted with their lots and looking for some way to make their lives better. Philip Seymour Hoffman, however, is the dominant part of this relationship. And he manages to convince his brother that it'd be a very good idea if they knock over a jewellery store. Yeah, that's right. You got it. Now listen, we don't want Tiffany's. We want a mom and pop operation in a busy place on a Saturday with a week's take still in the safe. We both work there. We know the safe combinations. We know the burglar alarm signals. We know where everything is. I figure between the week's take the jewelry and the cases, the vault. There's a five hundred thousand dollar haul. I figure probably six. That old dumb old lady that works there, she's alone till noon. She's not going to be a problem. Andy. Yeah. That's mom and dad's story. That's what I said. The mom and pop operation. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't think about it. It's perfect. It's perfect. Like in and out in a minute. Insurance takes care of mom and dad, so they're not hurt, right? Weak. The cops will put, oh, cops will put it in the back of the file Andy, cabinet. I, 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 <laughs> Why do you even want me in on this? I'll solve everything for both of us. You couldn't you just listen to Philip Seymour? We Hoffman? need to get him in on the program this year. Yeah, I think that's that's the challenge: is to convert you to the uh, to the true faith of. Uh, you, the, the boys from Dublin, and uh, and to get Philip, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Hoffman onto the program. I mean, he just doesn't put a foot wrong, and I, it it doesn't matter what he does, whatever he turns his hand to, he does seem to physically transform with each role. He is a physically different person in this film than he is in Charlie Wilson's War, and oh, despite the fact that there is absolutely no physical resemblance between him and Ethan Hawke, I mean, they de- they you know they fairly look like they're, they're not even of the same species. You do come to believe in them as brothers because what you believe in is the is the and the tension between the two of them. Now, of course, inevitably, in the way of these things, knocking over your mum's, your mum and dad's jewellery store, everything goes hideously wrong, terribly wrong, and they fall into this kind of whirlpool of moral and uh, criminal repugnance, and everything falls around, uh, falls apart around them. The story is told in a non-linear flashback structure in which you see various elements of the story from the points of view, points of, view of different characters. So it's kind of like a Rashomon meets Memento, kind of played out of sync. And it's directed what by... What does S- that mean? Well, Rashomon, you know Rashomon, the famous... You know what Rashomon is? Explain. No, okay. Rashomon is a, is a film in which you see um, a story told from several different points of view. And it's, it's kind of demonstration that no two people seeing any event will see the same thing. And Memento was just a very cheap way of invoking the idea of a non-linear, something told in the wrong order back to front. But it was a cheap shorthand, and I apologise for that. No, no, thank you, Doctor. It's, it, it's explained. Good. Um... It's directed by Sidney Lumet, Mr. Lumet. Mr. Lumet is now an octogenarian director and has an extraordinary past on him. You know, 12 Angry Men, Serpico, Pawnbroker, Dog Day Afternoon, Prince of the City Q&A. Also has such things on his rap sheet as that Melanie Griffith movie. Do you ever see that? A Stranger Among Us, but it's called Close to Eden. It was released over here, in which Melanie Griffith is an undercover Jew. I mean, really, she gets sent undercover into America's hardcore Hasidic community. And she changes her name to Hannah and starts wearing a shawl and drinking chicken soup and saying oi a lot. And it's really, really... Are you suggesting that if Mr. Lummet is granted a retro Perspective by the BFI that yes. maybe he might maybe that one might be hoiked out. He may wish to over overlook that, as he also may wish to look at fi- Find Me Guilty, which I don't think has even been released here, which I've seen, which is a film in which Vin Diesel demonstrates his acting chops or lack of them. But suddenly here he is back firing on all cylinders, like somebody who suddenly discovered. So- you know that have you seen Cocoon? Yes. You know the bit when they, they dive into the swimming pool? Where the old people get younger. They are, yeah, exactly. It's like that. It's the, 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 the verve and the energy and the spark and the edge of, uh, you know, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead is really, you know, does not befit an octogenarian director who I have to say in the past few years has looked like he's kind of, you know, slightly freewheeling. I will draw this comparison. You're going to be cross with me for doing it. But it's like what happened with Friedkin and Oh, Park. No, I, sorry. I, I was ahead of you there. Thank you. Because it is like the work of a much younger 
younger director. Now, it's not, I don't know that it's a masterpiece. What I do think is it's a very, very well-tooled crime thriller that has serious, uh, you know, moral issues. It's also just a good bit of entertainment. It has a yet another very fine performance by Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, good support for Marisa Tomei, who is a strange career, Marisa Tomei, because she, she won the Oscar for My Cousin Vinny, didn't she? And then she was, and we, out of absolutely nowhere, nobody, that wasn't me, and that was the chair... Just for those who I'll do it again. I, I just assumed it was there goes Nick the chair. Duncalf. Thank you. I yes. was blaming it on him. I just want everyone to know it's the chair. It's the comedy chair. Fine. So she had this, you know, the, the, it, she, and I think she was nominated for in the bedroom. But she's, you know, she kind of comes and goes, and you forget about her. And then she comes back and she, she, she'll she'll do a very sort of strong supporting performance. But she's never really been the massive mainstream star. Perhaps she could have been. It's very well put together. It is very edgy. The twists continue and keep going right up until the very very end. As I said, I, I don't know that it's quite the masterpiece that some critics have said. I mean, I've seen five-star reviews for it in a number of the papers and the poster is adorned with quotes saying, best film of the year. Absolutely. I'm not sure about that, but it's certainly the best film that Lummett's done in a very, very long time.